Hey everybody, it's me, Mr. Sid. I'm back and look, I'm prepared for the rain because today's story is all about a cloud. Wait, let me double check if, uh... yeah, yeah, I think we're good. Okay, all right, I can take this down now. Hold on a second, all right. Ah, first, let me point out my painting back there. I love clouds. Those paint, that painting back there are of a special type of cloud. Those are cumulus clouds. There are three types you should know. The stratus clouds, which are commonly seen as overcast clouds in the sky, or fog here in San Francisco is also a stratus cloud. They're roughly from zero to a thousand feet. And then there's the cumulus clouds. Cumulus clouds are 10,000 feet up in the air, and those are like heaps of clouds, and we've had a lot of them around lately. Those can bring storms. And then there's the alto cirrus, which are wispy little clouds high, high in the sky at about 30,000 feet. Today's story is about a type of cumulus cloud. It's called Lizzie and the Cloud written by the Fan Brothers. I don't know anything about these brothers, but clearly they work together. And what I like about this book too is there's a second jacket underneath the paper one. Check it out. Here she's prepared for snow, and here she was prepared for rain, which is why I have on my raincoat. So let me take this paper one off. Lizzie and the Cloud. I love this book. It was Saturday. Every Saturday, Lizzie went for a walk with her parents. There was no better place to spend a Saturday than at the park with its gazebos and fountains, the shade of its grand trees. Lizzie ran straight for the cloud cellar. That's most unusual. Most people were in a rush to get to the new carousel or the puppet show. Clouds were a bit out of fashion these days, but not to Lizzie. The clouds bobbed gently up and down with every breath of wind. Some were puffy and round. Others were wispy and almost not there. There was a parrot, a rabbit, a fish, and an elephant. I like the octopus. Mm -hmm. But Lizzie wanted an ordinary cloud. Pardon me. Where is she? <clears throat> I don't, oh, there she is. <clears throat> Can you find her? I don't. She's walking down the street. She's got a little tiny cloud with her right there. It's in a little cloud. Isn't that cute? She named her cloud Milo. It seemed like a good name. Naming your cloud was the first instruction in the manual. There were more steps than she had been expecting. Caring for your cloud. Congratulations on the purchase of your new cloud. Instructions for a happy and healthy cloud. Number one, name your cloud. Number two, water your cloud daily using only fresh, clean water. Failure to do so may result in your cloud evaporating into thin air. Number three, however, avoid overwatering as this may result in downpours of rain. Rainfall can be unpredictable. Always place a bucket under your cloud as a precaution, especially when your cloud is young. Five, clouds are sensitive and sometimes moody. Thunderstorms are possible if a cloud is unhappy. And six, Never confine a cloud to a small space. 
Lily carefully watered Milo each day. Clouds, you know, are made of little drops of water, so this is important. In turn, Milo watered Lizzie's collection of rare orchids, plants, and ferns. Have you noticed that Lizzie's hair looks a little like a cloud? <laughs> a little bouffant? On sunny days, she would take Milo with them on their walks. But he seemed to like rainy days most of all. Over the following months, Milo grew bigger. And bigger. Woo! Look at that. And dark. Look at that. Do you see that? Until he covered the entire ceiling. Would Milo ever stop growing? Lizzie looked in the manual for a way to fix this, but nothing she tried seemed to work. One night, Lizzie heard a low rumbling overhead. She knew what this meant. Uh-oh, dun dun dun. Rain. She hid under her bed until the downpour was, or the tantrum, excuse me, was over. Look at all the little cups and things she's had to lay out to catch the water. It's not enough though, not with such a large cloud in your bedroom. By morning, only a few raindrops fell. Milo looked regretful. If a cloud could be said to look regretful, but Lizzie knew he wasn't to blame. She had forgotten the most important rule in the manual. Do you remember what rule number six was? Never confine a cloud to a small space. Look at how she has to get up on the roof. Even though it wasn't in the manual, Lizzie knew it was time. Milo needed to float free. Oh my God, look at her hair. Look at the cloud. <laughs> I love that. Stay close to the bigger clouds, Lizzie called out to him with a voice more suited to a small quiet room, not the big open sky. Aw, oh, there he goes with his string still attached. Soon Milo couldn't be seen at all. Whenever the weather was cloudy, Lizzie would think of Milo. And if she ever spotted a particularly fluffy cloud, she would wave. Just in case. Oh, and that is the end. Oh, I love this book. I hope you did too. Come back for more guys. Bye.